Well, we can now speak to Kambale Musavuli. He's with the Center for Research on Congo. He joins us now on Skype from Accra in Ghana. Kambale, this really seems to be a story about the developing tensions between Chisikedi and his predecessor, Joseph Kabila, who continues to wield plenty of power despite not being office. The justice minister, I believe, is one of his. Can you break down those dynamics for us? Indeed, and I think it's important to look at this crisis mainly from uh, the election in 2018. Uh, the 2018 election, which, which was contested uh, by many, has been dubbed as fraudulent. But what he actually created is a deal between the president, who did not control the state apparatus, with Kabila, uh, who controls uh, both chambers of parliament. He controls the military and many other state institutions. Uh, almost two years later, we are seeing now that the president is unable to actually rule in the country. And he does not have the support of the Congolese population, given the grievances of uh, the elections that have not been addressed. So it's easy to see uh, a disagreement between uh, the, the justice minister end up with an arrest, mm. uh, not following the process, um, but also to actually hear the prime minister uh, send strong warning to the president, something that would that never happened in the Congo in the past two decades, that mm. the prime minister can actually warn the president. So we know that Felix Tshisekedi does not control the state, and does not control the country, and there is a power struggle in preparation of 2023 presidential elections. Well, let me ask you then about public opinion, because we saw primarily Tshisekedi's supporters take to the streets to protest these judicial reforms in the last week. How does the Congolese public feel about all the, the tension that's escalating and what's going on here? Uh, it, it wouldn't be uh, fully correct to say it was only Tshisekedi supporters who took it to the streets. Uh, there were uh, unions of uh, motorcycle riders, uh, different mm -hmm. uh, segments of the society, that they actually went out. Uh, of course, pol uh, political supporters are usually noticeable in this protest. But the Congolese population is clear. Uh, they have observed for the past two years, they have noticed that they have not received, uh, they have not seen the aspiration reflected in how the government is ruling, uh, specifically around the question of justice. Uh, as you may know, uh, we have the Congolese Prize, uh, Nobel Peace Prize, Dr. Mukwege, who has called for an independent court to be created in International Tribunal for Congo to try uh, the major atrocities that have taken place. Mm -hmm. So the Congolese population for the past two, two decades have been uh, anxious to see justice for the crimes taking place. But what we have seen is uh, a government that's unable to rule and actually provide justice for them. So what the Congolese people are saying in mass is the true test of justice in DRC is if the crimes of yesterday committed by the past regime is actually tried in court and they actually see people in crime, not these two, three hours uh, arbitrary arrest that result with the minister now in his home uh, watching probably this program why Congolese still long for justice in that country. Well, let me ask you then about the judicial reforms that have been proposed, because a number of people would say that they eliminate any kind of separation of powers. So what does that potentially mean for justice and, and where this conversation now goes ar around these reforms? Indeed, uh, of course, uh, you, you pointed it out very clearly. Uh, the reform is actually taking the judicial branch to be now under the supervision of the justice minister. And that's predictable. I mean, the House, if I have to speak about the, how, uh, the Parliament, uh, 350 members of uh, the lower chamber are part of the Kabila regime when mm. we have 500, 500 members of Parliament, same thing for the Senate. So they have been putting in place laws that will actually change how the, ju the judicial system works in their advantage. And as I said in the beginning, it's predictable. There was a deal to have... Uh, Felix Tshisekedi as a president today, mm -hmm. they have a coalition where even the Congolese population do not know what's the content of the agreement for the, the coalition to for power sharing. But what is clear, within the coalition, Joseph Kabila's allies are still strong and they are deciding for the future of the Congo. But the call is not necessarily what Felix Tshisekedi and his supporters will do. The call is for the Congolese people. They showed force in the streets in early this week when they went out mm -hmm. denouncing this uh, judicial reform, and they must continue to be vigilant and put pressure until they can have leaders that come from their aspirations rather than those who are cutting deals on the back of their work and their struggle in the country.
Well, it's a situation we'll continue watching very closely indeed here on Al Jazeera. Kambale Musavuli, who's with the Center for Research on the Congo. Great to get your insights here on Al Jazeera. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.